Yeah, man, like a long ass time ago. I guess Gons was doing an interview with Thrasher and he was like, they were like, who do you think's good? And he's like, well, I don't know. He's like, too bad, like, Duffy doesn't skate anymore because he used to be good. <laughs> and, then he, and then he was like, this was a long time ago, too, when I was totally still skating. <laughs> and then he goes, you know what he should do? He should get on a board like this. I'm going to leave it here. And then I, I just happened to be at Thrasher, and Jake's like, hey, 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 but Mark left this for you. Here, take it. I was like, really? That's really strange. I was <laughs> so psyched, though. I went and shot an ad on it and stuff with playback. <laughs> Who owns the footage of you trying to, um, where you got hurt your knee? I have that right here. I have one right here on my laptop. It was already used on that fucking stupid MTV show. out today man it's coming back it's getting real strong man I'm so psyched I'm so embarrassed that I did that show there was like rollerbladers on my episode and shit like I told them you know like I've done this for a career for 15 years don't lump me in with some kid from Bakersfield who is a backyard wrestler for fun you know like forget it dude hi welcome back to the show this episode is about Pat Duffy I just remember when Questionable came out, I had never heard of him, nobody had ever heard of him. And his part was one of the best skate parts in years. Pat was probably the first handrail pro. He was doing things that people didn't think were possible. Plan B was, was created as kind of a super team to have the best people from every genre of skateboarding. I think Mike Ternaski sort of set this template, this plan B formula that I see a lot of companies now, like Zero and Baker. You can see it all kind of took plan B's lead. The first time I heard about Pat Duffy was, um, man, that is a long time ago. Ternowski, Mike Ternowski was talking about this new guy that he had found that lived in Marin County. He was coming out and he was filming and he was doing a lot of, uh, really impressive things so you know we kind of knew that he was going to be professional right away i had flown down just to see if i was would fit in on the team you know whatever when you had to uh go and meet people on plan b was it intimidating was it like yeah like mike carroll for instance well carroll i knew already because i had you know you remember in hocus pocus the hensley balance beam that they used to skate at school w i had one of those a portable one so people used to come skate that thing from everywhere Carol Brothers would come skate, like Danny Sargent, Henry. Um, and then I had a ramp in my yard, too. So I kind of had, an, I, I had a, I'd known those dudes, you know? Um, but it was intimidating to go, like, hang out with Danny Way, you know? <laughs> when I was, like, 17 years old. Like, my point of view coming from, you know, like, watching him and Colin, like, in, all, in videos growing up, and then, like, MT just going, hey, yeah, you're staying at Danny's house, go with him. And I'm just like... Right. Okay, <laughs> whatever. I, don't know. I can't do it, I can't do it. Ah! 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 Look, oh, I'm bleeding. What? Let me give the fury of Pat, dude. You see Pat? Pat is actually oh. a Terminator. Oh. Oh. We filmed for like three weeks every day, like, but they were just staying at my house while I went to school and shit. Where was that, the square with the big rail? Um, that was at San Pasquale in San Diego. You did it twice? Yeah, yeah, twice. <laughs> Why'd you do it twice? I think we were thinking different angle, and I was like, sure. You know, one from the top, one from the bottom. We didn't have two cameras. <laughs> it was just uh, Mike filming. Yeah. But I remember at the time when that came out, too, thinking that you couldn't grind a round bar. But you just, what made you think you could grind a, like a round bar? Well, because I, ha I don't know. I had that balance beam growing up, you know, and I just got comfortable on grinding metal rails, you know? I don't know, man, I just like, I just liked doing that at the time. I was kind of scaring myself. I, I literally like lost my mind ch ch uh, backsmithing that kinked rail at SF State. Cause I knew I could do it and I just wasn't doing it, you know? Did you know that the Plan B video would be as big of a deal as it was? I mean, I don't know, really. I mean, you know, of course you knew it was because you knew it was gonna be something. 
crazy because we would see the footage going down and there was nothing, you know, like Ternowski made it a point so that we knew what everyone else was doing so that we could feed off of it, you know? He would always call every day and be like, yep, you know, Rick did this, like, like Carol, Carol got this, and he'd be like, you know, and he'd just get so psyched. He's one of my favorite skaters of all time, you know? I would rather watch fuck Carol do a back tee on a ledge than, than you know, some dude jump down a 30 stair trying to kick flip it, you know? I, it's just, he's so, his whole style is like so sick. I mean, when I started working for Plan B, Pat's part was already done. That was kind of how it was set up, you know? Which I think Mike, you know, kind of strategically did to get everyone fired up for the video to have this amazing part and then have everyone, you know, doing their own part after that. And, you know, imagine being Mike Carroll and coming down to this new company, Plan B, and seeing Pat Duffy's part and having Mike put your arm around him and say, you're my, you're my top street pro, come on, you know? How could you be super stoked? It's like, fuck. I mean, when, when we first got on, like, Plan B started and all that, it was like, it's just this whole awesome thing. And then um, it seemed like there's a little bit of, t like, not tension, but, I don't know. Just people had different ideas, you know? Like, all of a sudden, you're just like, I have to learn a trick. Not like, oh, it'd be cool to learn a trick. So Mike and I were doing this, this you know, this voiceover for this project. He's like, dude, do you have that old first version of Questionable with the Gons in it? I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, remember, he was at the Powell contest and we had the trick of him and he called Mike Ternowski and told, told him to take it out. And I was like, what? Gons did that? And, I, and then I vividly remembered Mike being really bummed, you know? Because I don't think, I think that just the way that Mike approached skateboarding, a lot of skateboarders didn't like that. But I, I know that in his heart, he loved skateboarding. So I think it's kind of heartbreaking when you think you're doing something for the better good of something and someone else doesn't. And I don't, you know, Mike, I don't know, Mike did amazing things while he was alive. That's, I'm not just saying that because he's dead. Hey. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Hey, even yeah. though I could have did better, man. Oh, yeah. I, I believe that you, was man. tough, man. I like that. What kind of wheels you got? The little ones. What do you got to say about that? Uh, I got to say. Only thing I got to say oh, is look here. The guy is a natural. He's a natural. And you know something? <laughs> when you want to make a million dollars, hey, you come and look for me. You look for the baby. Because the baby, hey, the baby knows the natural. Hey, show, hey, come on. Hold it up there. Show him who's number one. Show him who's number one. That was great, man. That was great. That was great. I, ex I especially like the flip of the board. That was really good. I can't jump that high. My vertical leap's only about an inch. <laughs> if that high. Take it hey, y'all ride on, man. Have a good trip now. What's that? It seemed like those two, the virtual reality came out like almost, to me it seemed like immediately. I mean, I guess it was a year later. It was a year later, yeah. That's pretty fast now. Like for, now, now, for nowadays, like people sit on them for a couple of years now. You know, it, it was different. It was just a different vibe back then, though, because no one really made any money, and it was like you were still kind of, you were still just, like, skating all the time, you know? Yeah. There was a, a white rail lip slide that went down and flat. That took a couple times because I kept sticking on it, and I had to set up a slick bottom. Jake Rosenberg filmed that one. I mean, Pat's fucking first video part's one of the greatest video parts in the history of skateboarding. And it's like, who the fuck is this kid? I've never seen him before. I mean, it's, and he didn't exactly have a sophomore jinx. I mean, I think his virtual reality part is equally as impressive. Whenever, when, when a lot of those guys left to do girl, to, I mean, did you take that personally or was that? No, I didn't take it personally at all, you know? I figured they, you know, like, they, they had their reasons. Yeah, you know, that's what Mike Carroll told me, and this I think we'll, we have to explore it another time, but he was like, you know, we knew we were leaving the company, you know, long before we did. And that's why we had the friends section, is because we knew there was never going to be a blind video. But I did get a call from Rick saying, like, this is what we're doing, and, you know, we just, you know, we want you to know that this is what we're doing, and then you can make a decision on your own, you know, what you're, what you're going to do, which I thought was, was pretty cool of them, to, just to let me know what, what was happening that day, like the day they showed up with all the girl shirts on, you know? The way we did it was crazy, but... Just all at once, take half the team. Yeah, not tell anyone and didn't like give any notice or anything. But I mean, if you know how powerful World or Rocco or any of those dudes were back then, if you tried to, you let them know, they would have 
we would never you know, even exist because they would have never let it happen. Just because that happened didn't really phase me on like turning my back on MT just because, you know, I mean, he kind of like took me in as like, you know, like one of his, one of his kids, you know? And he looked at all those guys like his kids. Re again, regardless of how he did business and regardless of how people like saw him in a certain capacity, he cared tremendously for everyone who skated for him. And I think he took pride in giving them an opportunity or promoting them to be great skaters. Like so when, when so Mike died on May 17th, 1994, I went down to San Diego for the funeral. And I remember seeing Danny outside the funeral home where they were having the viewing for Mike, which was like the worst idea to go, to go there. But Danny was just crying. And like Danny was crying because he was, you know, devastated. I don't know, he's just kind of like a second dad for me, you know. So. Yeah. I just, I just appreciated everything that he kind of taught me. And then so when Plan B ended, did, did you know what you were going to go after that? No. These are all think boards? These are, yeah. I was going through them the other day and I was like, damn man, I must have been raging when I lived in San Francisco. They're all booze graphics. <laughs> They're all of them. It's crazy. You know, Gabe, Gabe Morphin and I grew up together, you know? and. Uh, I was just hanging out with Gabe, and he was going out with this full deluxe staff, so he was going out with everybody, and I used to just like, I don't know, I was back in San Francisco, you know? And I was just hanging out with skateboarders again. You know, 14 years later or whatever, I look back on that time now, and I'm like, holy shit, I was involved in, in my opinion, like some of the greatest videos in the history of skating. When skateboarding was dead, you know, Plan B reinvigorated it, whether it caused people to revolt against it or it caused people to, like, do more technical, better tricks, Plan B was at the epicenter of what changed skateboarding.